microphone's muted. Jeez. Sorry about that, guys. Wow. What a start. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully you guys can hear me now. What a fantastic start. Doing a lot of different things this morning. Apologize for the little bit of technical difficulties. I redid Streamlabs OBS last night. We now have this beautiful tip right here. This right that, that oh, yeah. We have that ticker now in the bottom left hand corner. Well, the bottom, whatever. It's in the left, it's in the right, yeah. In the bottom corner of the screen, just spice up the life. I redid the intros, the stream starting soon, the Be Right Back scene, so hopefully that's visually appealing to you guys. If you guys don't like it, well, hey, you know, it's the best I can do. I'm a trader, not an OBS technician. Uh, and I set it up for YouTube because we have way more following on YouTube, so hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get the nice little cool, you know, pretty little pop-ups now on YouTube as opposed to Twitch. But again, we're on Periscope and Mixer as well this morning. So hopefully that all works out really good. As always, guys, make sure to post any questions that you may or may not have in the chat. Just let me know what you guys are thinking. We do this every morning at 11 o'clock in the morning. All right, fantastic. So I will go ahead and answer this question first, and then I will get into uh, what I normally do. So Light Yagami, how are we doing this morning? So glad to see you here. Gabe Anderson says, I'm watching from work today and want to get a question in before I get busy. I am new to your channel and would like to know where to start learning how to trade. What resources do you recommend? Well, there are some really good resources out there to learn how to trade. I highly recommend Bitcoin Trading Challenge uh, YouTube channel. Uh, he's got some fantastic educational resources. We also have a Trading Crypto 101 playlist that I will be adding to new videos on a weekly basis. So that's also a good place to learn. Babypips.com is a good place, but you know, honestly, and again, biased here, but I, I highly recommend getting a community that can support you. Getting tr surrounding yourself with traders who have experience in the marketplace, who know what they're talking about. Uh, join our Discord, man. There's a lot of good traders in there. You can post your chart ideas. You can post, uh, you know, you can ask questions. They're all pretty good guys. Uh, you know, and we do have the uh, the premium signals and one-on-one -on -one mentorship program that I think would be helpful to traders. That's why I offer it. Um, so check that out, man. Otherwise, you know, just, just have a passion for learning and research. Uh, get familiar with backtesting a strategy that you think is going to be successful. Um, and just... Patience, 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 and diligence, diligence, diligence. This is a lifestyle. This is a uh, this is a hobby or a recreation that can pay off and be extremely profitable. It just takes dedication and patience. Now, I will say that Streamlabs OBS is not working with the chat. I still have to have the pop out chat. Seems like we're not getting too bad a lag though. So that's good. So that's good. Real Stogger Roach, how we doing this morning? Hopefully you're not late for class, man. Mad Hito, no voice. Hopefully, I think you're probably watching on a delay uh, because I did not have audio at the beginning of the video. So you should be hearing me by the time you sync up to what's actually current. All right, so cool. The skip frames have dropped off. Hopefully it stays that way. And Gabe Anderson, anytime, man. There we go. All right, guys, so let's get right into it. <laughs> I want to start off today with talking about some important news. And this important news regards SEC regulation on ICOs. So for a very good summary of this, uh, I'm going to turn to Jake uh, Shervinsky, who is an attorney who has experience with uh, the SEC and financial regulation. And so I want to just, I'm just, this is a lot, but we're just going to go through this together and we're going to do it fairly quickly. And I think this is very important for what we can expect for the future of altcoins and cryptocurrency in general. So uh, as, as you may or may not know, the SEC did just put out official rulings on Paragon and Airfox, which were two ICOs that did ICO and collect millions of dollars after the SEC's 2017 Dow report, where they said that tokens are securities. Now, the SEC had, you know, and this is frustrating about the SEC because people just want consistent regulation from the SEC. However, that's really not how they work. They don't put out, well, they, they don't put out broad guidelines generally, not for a long time. What they do is they have a policy called 
and Jake will touch on this, but I've noticed this as well in the options market is, is that they touch on um, what they like to call in, uh, regulation by enforcement. And what that means is that, uh, I drink water like a horse. What that means is that they will create their rules essentially by, by key enforcements in certain areas. Now keep in mind, and Jake will touch on this, that the SEC does not make law. Uh, the, the Congress and the courts make law. So the SEC does not have the power to make law. The SEC can only choose what it will enforce and how it will enforce it, but they can change their mind. They can be proven wrong. Uh, they can be beaten in court. So the SEC is not some all powerful governing body. They're just a regulatory um, uh, executive, um, I mean, firm, whatever, whatever word you want to call, whatever word you want to call it, but they can be proven wrong. They can be beaten in court. So moving forward, let's just go over what Jake has to say about this. So he says, today marks the conclusion of what I'll call phase one of the SEC's crypto enforcement strategy. And he says he's going to talk about this and what to expect in phase two. And here, the first point he touches on is what I just said. The SEC does not make the law. Congress makes the law and courts interpret it. SEC lawyers only decide their own enforcement strategy. Nothing they say is binding. They can change their minds and they can lose in court. Let's start with the enforcement actions. According to the SEC, both Air Fox and Paragon raised millions of dollars through ICOs conducted after the SEC's 2017 Dow report. We pretty much saw this coming after last week's Ether Delta order. And he references his previous tweet where he says that in the 2017 Dow report, it was the first time that the SEC said that a token was a security. The SEC said both companies issued securities under the Howey test. For those of you not familiar with the Howey test, this is the this is the, the baseline for whether something is considered a security or not. Basically, to reduce it to its simplest element, if you purchase something mainly on the idea that you're going to gain profit off your investment, you're being sold a security. Uh, since the ICO tokens weren't registered, the company viol violated Securities Act Section 5. So what's the punishment for issuing an unregistered security? 250 grand. End of story. Yes, really. It's 250 grand. Air Fox and Paragon raised 15 million and 12 million respectively. Both are free and clear with a $250,000 penalty plus compliance, which means registration, registration and disclosure. So they're just right back off to the races. Air Fox and Paragon ICO'd, got hemmed up by the SEC, paid less than 5% of what they raised, and they're off to the races again. They're good. They just register and move on along. He says, note that both companies got the same penalty despite being very different. Air Fox transfers mobile airtime and data. Paragon services the illegal cannabis industry. One seems more risky than the other, yet both of them paid $250,000. Will that be the price for everybody? Then came a new SEC statement. This is the first time since Bill Hinman's speech saying Bitcoin and Ether are not securities because they're sufficiently decentralized. So according to the SEC, Bitcoin, Ethereum, not securities. Let's see here. So the new statement uh, covers, uh, excuse me, the new statement from the SEC covers all recent SEC enforcement actions against industry players, ICOs, exchanges, brokers, and funds. Which brings me to why I'm calling this the end of phase one. It looks like the SEC has been building up to this statement for almost a year. They strategically prosecuted a few members of each group in order to craft this statement as guidance for everyone else. This is classic SEC strategy known as guidance by enforcement can be deeply frustrating for an industry in need of a clear set of rules rather than a patchwork of orders, but regulators like this, and I understand this because it leaves them free to exercise their discretion. Basically, they can, you know, have fiat authority over what they want to do. And that freedom is crucial to understanding how enforcement works. In reality, very few SEC cases are openly litigated. Most settle after lengthy and private negotiations where both sides lay out their strengths and weaknesses and argue about what might happen if they do litigate. So because you have consumers and, and retail investors interested and, and liable to financial gain or loss based upon what the SEC and these, and these companies do, uh, it's, it's very rare that they actually want to drag the muck in the court and really battle this out. The SEC rarely wants to test uncertain legal theories in court. Remember, guys, just because the SEC says something is, is illegal doesn't mean that the court will see that way. And this is all this is all untested stuff. You know, we've never been we, we don't have super clear defined court cases that establish the illegality of Bitcoin, which means right now it's legal. And the SEC doesn't really want to go to bat because what if they get uh, a court ruling that is against them? And then now they have to really go back to the drawing board and start all over again. Let's see here. 
so the statement asks, when is a digital asset a security? The only answer it gives is look at the Dow report, even though that was issued 16 months ago. So the SEC hasn't really moved on their definition of what a security is insofar as a token. Basically, they're saying that a token is a security, which allows them to basically cherry pick what they can swoop down in on and, and enforce and regulate. The statement is even less helpful on complex questions like whether decentralized exchanges are subject to federal regulation. It says this determination depends on the relevant facts and circumstances. This is ultimate lawyer speak for not sure, don't add us. Nor does the statement say how far the Many companies are responding to U.S. regulatory uncertainty by trying to escape the SEC's reach. But will the SEC go after an overseas ICO or exchange that excludes U.S. citizens? Don't know. Don't add us. Right. Going back to that previous statement, it will it will be dependent on the relevant facts and circumstances. That's uh, that's wiggly wormy speak right there. Driving this point home, the statement ends consult with legal counsel concerning the application of the federal securities laws and contact commission staff as necessary for assistance. In other words, there are no simple rules. If you want answers, come ask. So that way they can take it on a case by case basis. All right, let's see here. Yet the statement does give us one very helpful and important assurance. There is a path to compliance with the federal securities laws going forward, even where issuers have conducted an illegal unregistered offer of digital asset security. So the SEC is not going to kill ICOs. They are offering a pathway forward. Like we saw with Air Fox and Paragon just now. They got slapped with $250,000. Boom, they're off to the races. Let's see. Now, according to Jake, the SEC has now addressed one of the one of the most major categories of market players. I think the only group they haven't talked about yet is the traders. I don't think they're planning to give us much more at this time. If I'm right, phase two isn't much fun at all. It's a slow, painful grind where the SEC cleans up the crypto space one settlement at a time. In a way, that's the right approach. It really isn't the SEC's job to make the law. Clarity really ought to come from Congress. And if you're tired of hearing about regulation and enforcement, I regret to inform you this is only the start. The securities laws are just one piece of the crypto puzzle. We get to do this all over again with the laws on taxes, money laundering, sanctions, trading, etc. Moving on. All right, so there you have it. Um, so hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Basically, ICOs aren't dead. ICOs are probably going to continue to move uh, forward in the space. They have a pathway to legalization. The SEC is probably going to move forward with making sure that all the SECs that have, or all the ICOs that have come out, um, either get uh, either get slapped with a fine, and if they don't want to pay, they're probably going to get dragged to court. So all we're going to see this is again we've been talking about this for a while. The bear market is going to is going to separate the wheat from the chaff, and we're going to be able to figure out fairly quickly. Uh, after we're done with all this, what what uh, what ICOs were worthwhile, what crypto projects are worth investing in, what has validity, and what does not. And this is going to give us good clarity moving forward. But the bear market on altcoins, at least, not over in the slightest, guys. So we need to be really tight with our margins as traders, really tight with our risk management. And we've got good, good. The restream chat is working. Good morning. How are we doing today? Good to see that. Oh, good. You're talking about the ICO news. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, Alex? Glad to see you this morning. <sighs> All right. So hopefully that was uh, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. I think that that's that's really clarifying moving forward. I think that again. Just like he said, we've got a slow, painful grind moving forward to get all these ICOs kind of shaked out. Uh, and I think that there's going to be better opportunities to accumulate dips moving forward on ICOs and projects, alternative cryptocurrencies that you think have validity. But now we are moving into the realm based upon this, that after we see the shakeout occur, we are going to be moving into the realm of legitimate investment opportunity beyond the realm of speculation. So your early investors are pure speculators. And a majority of them have taken profits or are still invested in uh, projects that they believe in. However, now that we're going to get actual uh, clear regulation from the SEC and a pathway to legalization, uh, meaning that we're not existing in the shadows anymore, now we're actually moving forward uh, into a realm where you could you could say that now we have less speculative investment on these ICOs. But again, we need to... Thanks, man. I appreciate that, Real Staga. Now we, we, we can move into a realm where now when people ask, well, hey, do you feel that this is a good investment? Again, not financial advice, but 
yes, now I'm now I'm able to say, well, they're all shit coins now. You know, now I'm you know now I can actually say, well, listen, they're registered with the SEC. They've paid their fines. They've paid their dues. Uh, the project stayed around. They were they clearly weren't just in it. For, you know, just to exit scam. So now we can legitimately talk about the value that these things have moving forward and what value they apply to the space, what their use cases are, uh, which I, I think was far less, was just way more speculative and way less attractive to potential retail investors uh, than um, uh, without that clarity, without that clarity. All right. Okay. So I do just want to point out one thing before we get started with our morning analysis, and that is going to be, let me pull it up here. I'm gonna have to scroll up. Okay, so here is example number one. All right, so here we go. All right, so I posted this in the premium discord last night. And uh, is it a cherry picked example? Sure, but uh, I'm gonna take it. It's a good call. So I posted this in the premium Discord last night, and then I actually posted it in the general, like just a few minutes later. So not uh, not a whole lot of delineation there. And so uh, this is just a good example. And, and the text that I applied with this is this is a good example of Fibonacci EMAs uh, being broken sequentially. So we can see that we're trailing down uh, in this uh, in this you know in this bullet in this bearish trend. And then we get a fairly strong capitulation candle on really high volume with a, with a decent tail at the bottom. Not a strong hammer candle, but again, just a capitulation candle. And you can see looking at the volume profile that we're in an area of high volume and we do see a stop loss hunt down into a low volume node. And that's to me a very bullish sign. So this is just as generally a candle that I like to aggressively market buy on because you can set a fairly tight stop. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. But if you're right, the profit opportunity is quite high. So it's a, to me, a high reward, low risk trade. And we can see that uh, we were being rejected by all of our EMAs. So we have our eight, 12, 21, and our 55. And then we have our, um, our average true range trailing stop, which is ATR times 3.5. And we can see here, we start, this is again, this, this is, I think is the best opportunity to enter into the market. But then we see bullish volume pour in and we see that the uh, eight period moving average gets broken and we get rejected from the 12 uh, uh, moving average period. We move back down, consolidate a little bit. This is a good dip. We're forming a higher low. This is a good opportunity to enter if you're looking at this. And uh, also you can see that uh, uh, Fisher transform gives us a crossover. However, using RSI to confirm the actual buy signal uh, would have been a good strategy in that case. We also get a MACD crossover at a fairly good opportunity to buy as well. However, you also could have seen the, uh, the waning bearish momentum as an early indicator on the histogram, or you could have waited for the crossover to the upside, guys. Patrick, how are we doing this morning? Good to see you, man. And then uh, we see, so again, we, we're seeing rejection from the 12 day EMA. We fall down into a dip, consolidation, bullish volume starting to come in. And then we get rejected from the 21 day EMA, or excuse me, the 21 period moving average. And what I had said was, this is a example of Fibonacci moving averages getting broken sequentially. So we broke the nine, we broke the 12, we're gonna break the 21, and then we're looking to break the 55. And again, I just like to go over and look at Bcash right now. Take your time. Take your time. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. So you can see that we did break the 21 day moving average. We came up and uh, had a failed breakout of the 55 day uh, EMA and then consolidated underneath. And now we've moved into full bull mode as we have all our fast EMAs crossing over our, flows, our slow EMA. And we also have a full, uh, full, bottle, full body candle close above the 55 day EMA. So breakout trade, still in the long position on Bcash. Uh, I already took profit. I took pro or my initial targets were, um, let's see, we entered, I entered at 442 and you guys can go check that in the Discord. I entered at 442, my targets were 650 or 460 or 450, 465 and 475. And we've blown past that, hit all my targets. Target two was 50% with, with 10X leverage. And that's all you need, guys. You just need a couple good trades. You wait for the trade to come to you. You wait for the setup. And again, this is the opportunities that I look at. You're in a downtrend. You're in a downtrend. Price cannot infinitely move downwards. You're going to see a bounce movement up. 
and then you see, look at volume, look at volume down here. You see a strong capitulation candle below support or support at, all right? So here's probably where people would have had their stop loss set right around this support, right around this high volume node, okay? Where your point of control is. And then you see a stop loss hunt into a low volume node, relatively. You can see that if you zoom in closely too, on, on very high volume, on very high relative volume. And that is again where I like to enter into the market because it often means that sellers are over their skis and there's no, there's very little selling pressure left to sell because this is this at this moment in time, you have retail traders convinced that the trend is going to go down and they want to trend follow. However, unfortunately, they are not getting into an opportunity where the market is overbought in a downtrend, which would be the correct way to do it. And short at that opportunity, again, guys, you wanna enter the position on the opposite color. So if you're going short, you want to be entering your position on green candles. And if you're entering into a long, you want to be entering your position on red candles, right? You wanna catch liquidity the correct way. Let's see. Yagami says, I say I'll allow it all the time. Did you get that from John Mulani? No, uh, I, I, maybe, I don't know. Maybe like just culturally like hearing it, but I've been saying that for a long time. Just quirks, man. We got a lot of quirks around here. So yeah, good, good. Uh, pretty happy with my position here in Bcash. And I've still got, listen, I took, this is how I average out of positions. Uh, so again, on this one, a little different. Every Everyone's a little different. But I, I felt very strongly about this trade and I entered uh, with my full position size at 442. And I would have had a stop and I have my stop. I said no more risk than 400, but again, the risk to reward ratio on that wasn't good. So I did have my stop uh, set below the high volume node right here. Uh, 426 is where I would have been looking to get out, but that's because I had 10X leverage. So, you know, with uh, three or one or five X leverage, again, your trade could be down here or your stop could be down here because your loss is going to be more relative to your game. And uh, let's see, so I, I took, 33%, a third of my position size out at 450, another third at 465, right here. And uh, now I'm just holding on for the other third. And I've got, you know, we'll just see how, we'll just see how that plays out. I've got a stop loss set for 465 now, so I have that profit locked in. And we'll just wait for that to happen. Johnny Boy Crypto in the house, guys. Your Crypto Daily in the house, guys. Make sure to go check out Your Crypto Daily news on the YouTubes and in the Discord. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I got that. Actually, uh, we you guys can thank guys. Make sure uh, it's not one of the more popular videos, but and and uh, you know it's it's kind of uh, it's educational. But go check out. Um, there's a new playlist in our YouTube now called Crypto Currently, and that's where I'll be putting interviews and having guests on. And actually tonight at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, I will be having Caleb on from Project Zero Z to discuss his project, the idea of uh, the diffusion of ideas and um, what he believes is the issue with the Bitcoin inflation model. So pretty smart guy. And I'm, and I'm excited to see what he has to say. And I'm excited to kind of debate some of these, I think, very critical topics uh, for the future of Bitcoin and decentralization live on the air. And but yeah, so uh, the ticker actually is courtesy of Dan uh, from Dank uh, at Dank Coins that I had on the show the other night. Um, guys, go check out that interview and check out Dank Coins on the Twitter and also CryptoScores.org for the BTC weekly pickup. All right. So let me minimize that. So let's get right into it, guys. Let's look at BTC. And we got to start off our day with looking at sentiment data. And then we can look at technical analysis. Why do we do this? Because we're not like everybody else. All right. Online on Mixer. Online on Periscope. Getting a warning from Periscope, though. It says my audio bit rate's too high. So if anybody wants to be watching us on Periscope, cool beans. I appreciate it. Just set that up last night. Let's see how it goes. All right. Apparently Coin Farm doesn't want to refresh. Or God forbid, I lost my internet. Okay, let's just exit the page and see if we can't refresh. There we go. And we're back in business. All right. <clears throat> So 
So on BitMEX, shorts versus long, still kind of locked in that equal state, guys, which to me means that we're going to be trend trading, all right, for the moment. And again, this is the perpetual swap contract. So again, this is where we're going to see actionable data. This is very important for seeing where price is going to go in the here and now. So looking back, let's see here. Midnight, one o'clock, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, we still see shorts in the dominance pretty much through this whole period, just slightly longs kind of trailing behind, falling behind a little bit, picking up, falling behind. And you can, you can notice that in the ebb and flow of the charts, guys. Looking back at the last 30 minutes, we see, uh, uh, we see shorts kind of pile on if we look at that BTC spike. And again, I am, I am saying that I am expecting uh, to see a short from here, I think is more likely. And we see that the shorts are kind of agreeing with me. The longs are trying to pick up. However, we've had 45 million shorts open up in the past hour as opposed to 30 million long. So again, not a huge drastic difference, a difference of 14 million positions, 14 million and a half positions. However, uh, the shorts are keeping it in the lead and looking at the last, uh, looking at the last 30 minutes, we see a, a dominance of the shorts 65% to 34%. Now we do see the longs trying to step in here now in the last couple minutes, but, and, and we might see a movement back up. So again, what we're looking for is we're looking for a good opportunity we're looking for a good overbought opportunity to enter into a short position, in my opinion. So you see that we came back up here and wicked right off resistance at our high volume node at our point of control right here. And that would have been a good pinpoint moment to enter into a short, in my opinion. Now, looking at the small time frame here, you can see that we have broken above our slow EMA. And so we, that is kind of a bullish sign. However, if we go out, let's start off the right way, guys off of looking at the 12 hour okay looking at the 12 hour chart fairly boring fairly boring we have not it's still been a on the larger time frame a bearish grind down we've had three successive closes inside of a bullish candle now i was saying that on a higher time frame this typically is what we call a three inside one candle pattern formation where we see a, a very bullish candle and then we see three weaker I low, uh, very low volume, low volatility candles close their full bodies with inside that. We might even potentially be seeing a fourth right here, but we can really see uh, momentum slow down. So you can see that momentum is slowing down right here, uh, as the MACD is telling us, because the, the, the area between the moving average convergence divergence line and its moving average is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And that's generally uh, a good indication of a bullish reversal. We can see that Fisher Transform is still trending upwards. Our RSI is still oversold and confirmed this moment in time as a good opportunity to enter. The RSI was actually less oversold here. So a little bit of bullish divergence actually right there on the RSI. However, full confirmation on the Fisher. So larger time frames, this looks fairly, this looks this is actually starting to look more bullish by the day. However, guys, let's not get overly excited. We have our daily close below us still at 5,200, our, our daily low close at 5,200, okay? So we're still waiting on that. Now we have closed a few days above that. Our new daily low close is 5,513 and we're trailing below that. So we're still looking at the low of our recent of our recent trading range. So, and that's at 5,200, 5,198, which I said earlier, corresponds to the 7186 uh, Fibonacci retracement from the swing to the uh, from the swing low to the swing high including the entire movement. No, we're going to get some biz bros in here warning could get weird again. Also might want to look at link. Oh yeah, I've uh, you know, hey, bring the four channers in. We'll take a look at link. Crypto Joker, how we doing this morning, man? Slept in too long. It's all right. Up bright and early to catch these market movements. And by market movements, I mean half a So yeah, this is looking uh, more bullish as we move on on the higher time frames, guys. But we've still got to get above 5,600. We're below all our EMAs on the 12-hour chart, on the daily chart, which doesn't surprise me. That's to be expected after a massive drop. It's going to take these with us. So I, I really do think we're going to experience range-bound trading in this point after this massive volatility. People are still pretty scared, man. Still kind of sitting back on their heels. So we'll take it one day at a time. Again, looking at our downside potential, Breaking 5200, we're really looking at going down to 4386. 
and retesting the upper bounds of this descending channel that we have been trading in all year long. And again, here is our ultra bearish to the floor 1K channel. We're nowhere near that, guys. So things are actually starting to look better today, even though it's still a red day for Bitcoin. Coming down to our six hour chart, Again, we still see that same range bound movement. We see our EMA starting to catch up a little bit, our fast EMAs anyways. And again, we're seeing that same, that same reduction of momentum in the MACD. Uh, the Fisher is topping below the zero line, meaning that we're not going to probably be entering into a strong bullish movement yet on the six hour chart. So again, still several days away. I expect probably that this week could potentially be quite boring, guys. RSI is still extremely oversold even on the six hour going to the four hour. Again, we still see the exact same range bound movement. Obviously, our EMAs are catching up quicker. Fisher Transform is able to make it just a little bit above the zero line right here. But, but, uh, but still, I consider that essentially a bottoming above zero. And we can see that as we saw that moving down, still until we are able to top or really move strongly above the zero line, uh, we're still uh, fairly neutral and the uptrend is not going to commence. And you can see that every time we've wicked up into 5600, like price just desperately wants to break above. Here's the four hour chart. Price just desperately wants to break above resistance here, which really starts at 5523 and ranges until 5583. So between the 55 to 5600 range is really the strong area of resistance right now. If we get above that, if we get above 5600 guys and we're able to close above some of these moving averages, then, uh, then it starts to look really, really, really bullish, guys. But for from a reversal pattern, again, this this to me in the longer time frames is a buy the dip opportunity. Today, looking more like a short opportunity. Looking at the hourly chart, except we see we're we see that we're attempting to break above our fast EMAs here, but we got rejected from the 55-day moving average in our in our uh, trailing stop ATR. So, and again, there's that bottom line of resistance right there, coming into strong resistance. So. Still got a hundred dollar gap to get above. I think more likely we move back down into these lower volume node areas. So back to the fifteen minute chart again. We're, so to, so for today, for the next, you know, for the for the for the uh, for the trading period today, I'm mostly going to be looking to take overbought positions and trade them to the downside. Looking for my RSI to become oversold. Looking for the Fisher Transform to give me a peak. Uh, looking for it to give me a sell, uh, for, for it to give me a short signal, which is the crossover on the lower time frames, and uh, also paying attention to VPVR. But again, as we know that you know we're, we're we're in the area of resistance, so I'm looking for us to come up to these areas of resistance and get rejected, and those are opportunities where I'm wanting to look to enter into a short. MACD not so helpful in this particular circumstance, and on the lower time frames, you can look for divergence as well, as you saw right here. We saw a peak on the Fisher Transform. And then we see price posting a uh, significantly higher high, yet the Fisher Transform posts us bearish divergence. So again, guys, this is something. This is something that the more the more that I am, um, we got Fumble Bumble wanting us to look at Link. How are we doing this morning, guys? Yes, I will look at Link. However, we do have to respect the format. It is BTC, Ethereum, XRP. I think I'm just going to do that from now on because not not so many people come in here care about LTC and who gives a fuck about Bcash anymore, except for me. I'm in a long baby. Like it might be time to close that out. That's all right. I've got my stop set for 565 or 465. Ah, fuck it. Let me take a little. Hold on a second. Take a little profit off the table. All right. Dunzo. Hey, Silver Limey 79. How are we doing this morning? All right, so let's go over and check out Ethereum real quick. Ethereum looks, uh, this will be quick because Ethereum looks boring as hell to me, guys. All right, we got a new follower. All right, Philip, thanks for the YouTube subscription, man. All right, let's see here. <clears throat> um, ba -da -da -ba -ba, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, wanted to look, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wanted to look at our BTC longs because I think this is important. Again, this is what distinguishes us from everybody else. All right, so looking at our BTC longs, guys, uh, BTC longs significantly lower, not significantly, but lower. All right, uh, Andre Clawhammer, I think. Thanks for the subscription on YouTube, man. So we, uh, you know, longs on Bitfinex are really taking a hammering right here, guys. And again, this is why sentiment data on Bitfinex can be helpful 
Uh, the reason why is because BitMEX data is really like right now, like what positions are open, whereas Bitfinex is posted. Stream is live. Shovel some coal in your mouth. <laughs> oh, man. These guys are killing me. So we do see that on Bitfinex, shorts peaking out. So where is price right now? Well, price is in a at the bottom of a downtrend, and we see shorts peaking out. Generally, uh, shorts are wrong. Longs dropping off. Generally, I'm looking to trade against retail investors. Now, we did get resistance from the 55-day moving average here on our higher time frames on our longs, which makes sense. We attempted to have a breakout. However, it was faded, moving down. And now we are trying to close between all our slow or our fast moving averages. Let's see, RSI did reach almost an overbought position at this point in time. However, looking here, and we see the following momentum. So we're not seeing a crossover yet. We're not seeing the, the idea that on the higher time frame, the longs are going to pick up. Sideways action, there is not a huge ratio between the longs and the shorts. The I mean, the ratio is... Uh, 4,128 BTC. So, so uh, excuse me. So not a, a massive, massive, massive difference there between the longs and the shorts. So fairly neutral. So that correlates fairly well to what we're seeing on Coin Farm with live data. Correlates very good, fairly, fairly well to what we're seeing on Coin Farm with live data. So 50% to 49%. Again, they're they're fairly equal. So again, until we see a massive change in sentiment, I really do think that as I've been saying for two days now, uh, buy the dip and range bound. And I'm not really starting to get worried until we break below 5,200, guys. So again, I still stand by what I said. I believe, uh, to my knowledge, uh, there are. Listen, no, I'll give them credit. There were for there were some really good, uh, really good um, guys on crypto Twitter, which I think there's like 40 of us left. That you know, been doing this for a year, man. On on crypto Twitter, at least the the, the few, the proud, the brave the ones who are still on crypto Twitter. Yeah, Ethereum looks like crap to me. Um, Ethereum, you should definitely still be in your short position. Uh, and you're not looking to exit until you get confirmation of any kind of bullish movement. But looking at the daily chart on Ethereum, uh, it looks just like uh, BTC, uh, actually. But it actually looks worse because of our proximity to the lows. Um, so actually, if we set... Uh, let's see. Style. And I guess it's not going to let me do that. So actually our low right now, our daily low is at 171.73. So looking uh, to be very afraid of that, uh, very afraid of that because guys, uh, I have plotted this out and I don't just pull these numbers out of my ass. Take a look down. Uh, why are they not here? Are they on the 12 hour chart? Six hour chart. Are they on the daily chart? Hmm, interesting. My lines seem to have disappeared. What a pain in the ass. All right, so anyways, uh, let's, uh, well, let's take a look at this, guys. Where, where do we see any kind of support? Well, 98.19, I said that, 100 bucks, guys, 100 bucks. That's, uh, that's what we see below us. And then if, we, if we're able to drop below 100 bucks, guys, there's nothing to 50 bucks. All right, just look at volume. Look at the volume profile over here, guys. This isn't, this isn't numbers picked out of my ass. This is where the volume's at. And this is also where we see periods of consolidation right here on the price. Let's zoom up a little bit so you guys can see where those lines correspond to. You guys know that what happens to resistance when it gets broken turns into support. So here we see a period of strong consolidation where price was turned around and broke through. This is an area where traders are obviously interested in the market. And we see the same thing right here, guys. And all this, like, listen, guys, all this is just nonsense. This is just trash. This is not strong support. Like price spent no time in these areas. It zoomed up, it zoomed down, it zoomed up, it zoomed down, it consolidated for a while. That's why we had strong support and resistance here. And we see that relatively price spent a longer time here than it did uh, in any of these uh, train track areas. And volume profile, just look at volume profile. It's a low volume node. Price has no interest in staying in low volume nodes. They want to go to high volume nodes because that's where people are actively interested in buying and selling. You either have uh, strong limit orders there from interested traders who know what they're doing, or you have uh, people uh, psychologically interested in aggressively market buying and selling in those locations. Going to the live chat. Hey, it's cool, man. Philip, thanks for the sub. I appreciate it, man. All right, real stog. Hey, man, you know, I'll look at XRP, you know, morning, noon and night, buddy. Uh, malicious upload. Hopefully that uh, stream is working for you now. Yeah, there was like a, there was there was like a slight delay. A couple people said that, but 
Let's see here. Blueberry pancakes, man. XRP win moon, sir. Uh, might be happening right now. I'm supposed to go to work, but need my fix from Jay. Right on, Joker. Nick, did somebody already ask about Link? Yes, I will be looking at Link. Just got to look at XRP next. Uh, it can't. All right, Philip. Let's see here. Why not, Philip? People are only just discovering it. Robot Rick Trade says, I am holding all my money in USDT around value of 78 Bitcoin. What next, please? Come on, dude. Come on. I'm not falling for that, dude. You may, you know, this is not financial advice. If you got 78 Bitcoin, you should, you know, and you don't know what to do, man. Like, uh, call, hit up Tone Base. He'll, uh, Tone Base will tell you what to do for your, with your, uh, with your 78 Bitcoins for, uh, for 0.1 BTC. Booty duty. Based magic meme line trader. Right on. We got 4chan in the house. What's the indicator to see the resistance on the left? That's called the volume profile, sir. So uh, you do need a uh, pro subscription to use the volume profile. So this is visible range. So you just go into indicators and go to volume profile. You will need a pro uh, account or, uh, you know, you guys can get the free 30 day account, which is the, you know, a, a trial for pro and you guys can use it. Uh, I like visible range uh, session volumes. Also really, really good, um, especially on the higher time frames. Uh, and fixed range is also fantastic. So different applications for different stuff. Yeah. Hey guys, I do just want to say, uh, listen, you know, I've been, you know, I've been uh, on 4chan since I was, since I was like 12. All right. Like I, I like, I remember like 9,000. All right. I remember all that stuff guys. And, uh, to, to see, uh, to see people posting about me on, on 4chan, I just, I just want to thank everybody who helped me get here. You know, I, I've really made it. I know that I've made it because people are posting about me on 4chan. So shout out to the Keck boys. Welcome to the stream, man. I will be taking a look at your stinky linky. I think that's the first time I've ever said those two words side by side in my entire life, except for that, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what's his name? Who's that rapper? White guy. Chain so stanky. That's a good song. All right, not generally my type of music, but whatever. All right, so yeah, Ethereum, uh, uh, la, la, la. Uh, going down to the 12 hour time frame. Looks like shit. Uh, six hour time frame. Pretty much also look shit. Again, look, I'll be I mean I'll give Ethereum its due. It's just looking more uh RSI is still very overbought. Fisher Transform gave you a buy signal here. Okay, you could have rode that up for a very short term bounce on the six hour, but you got faded off your uh off your uh, off your eight day, off your eight period moving average on the six hour chart. Go to the four hour chart. Again, you're getting the same thing. Rejection from your fastest DMA. So and still until like at the very least, look at the one hour chart. Does it look like slightly bearish on the one hour chart? I mean, pretty much the same thing. Like you get a false breakout here and now you're just getting rejected. So I'd be looking at the four hour chart and I'd be looking to like got eight period moving average at least so that you can actually start to say like, oh, okay, now we're like we're reversing. Uh, you know, with, with Bitcoin, and again, you can try and scrape the bottom here, guys. You can set your stop loss below here, but because you're... Uh, your stop loss hunt might or may not penetrate into there, but you know you might get stop hunted, guys. Again, you can you can look for these really aggressive handles uh, that are wicking down into low volume node areas and try to aggressively market buy. You'll be able to play the bounce and scalp trade. That's how bots do it, guys. That's how professional scalpers do it, uh, and and really hope for the bounce movement to the upward. Now, looking at, I will say this: looking at sentiment, looking at sentiment, I will give. Oh, you know what? I'm stupid, guys. Earlier when we were looking at long, when, when I said we were looking at longs, we were looking at shorts. My bad, my mistake. This is BTC longs. So everything I said earlier, completely reverse it because that's what I meant to say. Hopefully you guys can figure that out. Secret messages. Secret messages in the stream. I don't know. I'll allow that. Uh, K7 Gixer 1000, how am I expecting Bcash now, Bcash ABC to hit $400 with such little technical data for the new coin? Uh, I am not expecting Bcash to hit $400 whatsoever. I never said that. I simply said that I took a, uh, on the 15 minute chart, I took a leverage trade to the upside, which played out fairly well for me. 
So I entered at 442, I had sells at 450 and 465, and then I just sold uh, about half of the remaining third of my position, and I'm just gonna wait and see what happens uh, when we get close to this uh, uh, 55 day EMA. But I've got a hard step action, I have a hard stop, which I usually don't use, but since I'm on the stream, I just, you know, you, you gotta do that because I'm busy. Uh, set at 465, which is my T2. Yep, I have put MFT. I will be looking at MFT. Just give me a sec. MFT and link. I'll look at link first. Otherwise, the Keck boys are going to go crazy. All right. Um, and yeah, I uh, you, you have to rewind the video. I, I'll, I'll retouch on BTC moving later into the stream, but I got to be respectful to everybody else as well who are spending their morning with me. Now moving into afternoon. So uh, real quick, looking at Ethereum uh, sentiment data, uh, still uh, the longs are quite, 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 quite high guys. And the shorts are, I mean, in, in the distribution, I mean, there is, for the love of God, why does that left price scale always pop up? I'm gonna contact trading new technical support about that. I mean, there's, you know, there's a significant difference between longs and shorts positions, guys. Uh, you know, there's there's far more open interested longs on Ethereum uh, than there are shorts, like significantly so. So to the tune of like 254,000, 155 Ethereum in short positions and 692,766 in long positions. So the way that I tend to look at this is is actually kind of neutral for the, for the most part, but but more bearish because it means that you know, longs were skyrocketed here and so their horror price moved against them. Now, are we gonna see a bounce and recovery from here? But but what it what it's telling me is that shorts are in profitable positions right now. So they're going to be wanting to take profit and people are going to want to continue to add to their short positions, the psychology of people in profitable short positions. We'd have to look, I, I can look at Bitger and look at profitable bull bear income ratios on Ethereum, which I think is important, but but uh, and longs are in an, in highly unprofitable positions, which means they will probably continue to add to their positions since they're since they want to sell at break even. Uh, but also, what that means is that they don't have capital to buy since they already bought up here. So all the interested Ethereum investors already put their Ethereum into long positions. So where's the fresh Ethereum moving in to push the price up? I do not see it, and that means that we're going to have massive resistance around these levels. Looking at our volume profile because everybody that went long on Ethereum around these levels uh, and, and has to their horror uh, suffered significant drawdown, they're going to be wanting to sell at break even. So it's gonna be very difficult for us to get back over, uh, I think the, 200, the $200 range, very difficult. So we'll see when we get there. Traders guys, we take things one step at a time. All right, Ripple for the Ripple fan army, you guys. Uh, Ripple is starting to look pretty damn good on the daily chart. You can see we just closed twice above Actually, can, you know, we're not closing below the 55 day moving average, which is our slow moving average. Had a little bit of a three day fake out right here and then gapped right back above it. Um, really, really, really nice. We tried to get above our fast EMAs, that's fine. Play along with them for a little bit. Uh, and then we had some, then we, this is the dip. All right, so this is the dip. So look at the dip on Ripple, uh, comparative to the, rip, to, to the dip on Bitcoin. I mean, this is pretty fantastic to see guys. And again, I'm hearing people talk about, you know, is Ripple decoupling from Bitcoin price? I mean, potentially, yes, like the, the, I mean, look at this, we have massive, massive resistance here at 46 cents. And again, I've been saying this for a while that the bulls need to hold 45, 46 cents or the uptrend is exhausted. And like they watch the goddamn show, they have held that position beautifully guys. So again, uh, things start to look more consolidation-y around 44 cents. Uh, but uh, I mean, just, just based off price action on the daily chart, like Ripple looks pretty goddamn good guys. All right. Let's see, uh, 6Z just subscribed. Thank you for the subscription, man. Go over to, um, oh, there we go. It's over here. <laughs> Alex. Alex says Justin is awesome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Sorry, I, don't, I, I redid the Streamlabs OBS for, uh, since we get way more viewership on YouTube, I have to like, I have to like go back and look at Twitch sometimes, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, Streamlabs OBS, like can't handle them both. And I, I'm, you know, I, I pay for enough stuff, guys. Like, I don't really feel like paying them for, um, 
like five bucks. I mean, it's probably worth it, guys. You know, we'll get let's you know one, maybe once we get tips enabled, we get a super chat in here, then I'll be able to monitor chat more closely. Whatever, guys. Uh, so looking at the twelve hour chart, looks a little bit more hairy. Uh, again, the daily chart looks better, so we want to take that. Oh man, the subscriptions are pouring in today. Daniel, thanks for the subscription on YouTube, man. Appreciate it. Uh, so we've got the uh, we've got on the twelve hour chart we have price uh, trying to close here. We'll see we'll see if we can have this nice strong close above the fifty five day moving average uh, because we see the price did gap down below all these after the dip on the lower time frames. And again, we're trying to make a really good swing of it, guys. So this again, here's what I'm saying, guys. So this is a downtrend, all right. Well, this is a down movement, a little bit of period of consolidation, an attempted movement back up, but we're really not able to close strongly above the the bearish engulfing candles. And then we get another, this is the dip, all right? So this is the dip that we experienced just a few days ago. And I mean, look at this beautiful bullish reversal candle on strong volume, guys. These are the candles you wanna be entering into the market on, guys. Again, I was live on the air like a few days ago. And what did I say? I said, buy the dip. And, uh, and you know, I was getting trolled left and right because it's easy to sit on the sidelines and say, price is going down to fucking 1K. I'm not saying that. I do things one day at a time, one Satoshi at a time. And that allows me to do what I do. You know, I do this for fun. I mean, I trade like for a living, like Jesus Christ. Like I do this, man. Uh, anyways. Uh, so looked pretty good on the 12 hour chart. The Fisher transform trying to break above that zero line, which is what I like to see. Obviously, MACD confirming that you are getting that waning and bearish momentum. And again, we're looking to cross above that zero line and maybe get that MACD cross. All right. So a lot of bullish confluence and the, and, and the RSI right at that 50% mark, guys, which is pretty damn bullish. And we don't see a lot of resistance from that uh, from that RSI 50 mark, guys. Once when we get to that 50, we just kind of cruise along, which is pretty cool. So potentially like a little bit of sideways accumulation here uh, before we see a really big movement out of Ripple. But let's go see on the lower time frames. Lower time frames looking good, still getting actually on the lower time frames, getting a little bit of resistance from that 55 day moving average. So again, we're just looking to close above that strongly. But again, the daily going back to the daily, the daily looks quite strong. On the daily, you're seeing resistance from the fast DMS. Hourly chart, see what's going on today in today's trading range. Again, we have very bullish, strong candles. We have on the hourly broken cleanly above the 55 day moving average, now trending above the fast EMAs. So, again, pullback strategy, guys. The way that you can trend trade this is you're trying to aggressively buy pullbacks to your fast EMAs with your stop loss below your. 55 day moving average. So if you guys are trading this on an hourly basis, which is really an intraday basis, which is really a one to three day trade, uh, this is how you're going to want to be playing this. Going down to the 15 minute chart, let's say you're day trading. Again, day trading today looks pretty hot on Ripple. Again, you're strong. You, you should have been entering Ripple like right around here when price broke above your 55 day moving average. You're aggressively buying pullbacks to your fast DMAs with your stop loss set below your 55 day moving average, or you can use your uh, trailing stop ATR range. And, and boom, you've had, let's see. And for an exit, I like to use the Fisher Transform because the Fisher Transform will give you a nice crossover. You're gonna have to zoom in uh, real nice and close, or you can use, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, I'm still working on perfecting you guys, but I do have a, um, I'll show you guys. Uh, my scripts, um, Fisher Arrows. So I do have a crossover script strategy because since you're in your sub uh, since you're in your subgraph B right here, uh, subchart two B, whatever you guys want to call it, I call it B. Uh, you, you, it's it's if you're just watching the charts very closely and day trading, uh, it, it's it's often distracting to want to look down here. Like I know, but you want to know like exactly when you're getting that crossover. And the reason those aren't lining up is because I have this is a different Fisher algorithm, and I have it set to a different setting. So let's change the length. Okay. And there we go. There's we're now it's now it's lining up good. All right. So if you apply this script, and again, it's not perfect yet, so I'm not going to be releasing it to the public uh, yet. But it will be uh, it will be included for the premium subscribers, uh, at, at just like they get all my other scripts. And I'm working on getting those pushed out. I already gave them the uh, the uh, the quad uh, Fibonacci EMA, which isn't fantastic. I know I get that, but a lot of stuff we're working on, guys. But this is the kind of the one I'm working on right now as well. Um, and yeah, so this will be able to give you more clearly your exit positions. But again, it's not perfect yet because we're not catching these tops. So I'm actually, what I'm working on right now is uh, lining this up with RSI so that we can actually catch these tops. As you can see, our RSI gives you the overbought position on this candle. And actually, again, Fisher Transform reaches a peak as well. But Fisher lags behind because you don't get the sell, you don't get the cross until this candle. 
And the uh, the script that I have for the arrows is actually running on a different Fisher algorithm, which I need to update to this one because this is my multi time frame Fisher transform, which has the 0.25 de uh, deviation instead of the 0.5 deviation, and so is more accurate. Uh, but yeah, so Ripple looks really good for trend trading today. So again, uh, going back to the daily time frame, if you guys are trading on a, a position basis. Uh, again, yeah, I mean, your stop right now is right around 44 cents. I think that's very reasonable. Uh, you could also probably set it down below your 55-day moving average period here at 46. Like, nah, I'd set it down at 46 cents, maybe 46 and a half. Uh, but just be careful of getting wicked out, guys. Really, in this situation, I'm looking to buy uh, buy tails. And the only way you can hit those is on these lower time frames. Uh, and real quick, go look at uh, Ripple Sentiment. Okay. So Ripple Sentiment on the higher time frames. Uh, we've had a dip in long positions. That's all right. We have come to a fairly strong area of support. All right. And shorts are starting to rise up. So in an uptrend, shorts extended and longs uh, 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 longs deflated. Uh, as price is moving up, lets me know that price is, is likely to continue moving up. We see that uh, we actually are in an oversold position are on our longs, which to me, with continuing price movement, means that these shorts are going to uh, these shorts are going to get liquidated and they're going to cover, and that should accelerate the movement of Ripple up. So Ripple looking really good, guys. Congratulations to everybody who's in. Ripple at this point in time. Med Hito, I will not forget MFT. Kevin says, how about XLM? Why not? Let's add XLM to the list. And link, it will be link MFT XLM. XRP Squirt, how are we doing this morning? Malicious Uploader says, just a suggestion, but you may want to move the pop-up location for a new sub to one of the corners or to the sides so that it doesn't cover the charts we are trying to see. Yeah, uh, I, will, uh, I will definitely do that, man. Uh, I, I can't do that right now because I'm live and if I go screw with the editor, it'll probably mess things up, but that's a good suggestion. Thank you, man. Uh, PUBG Mobile says, how I am withdraw my, my POS coin. I don't know, man. Christian Martinez says, can I check out BAT, please? <laughs> Payday. Justin's big face on my 50-inch plasma. Right on, bro. Right on, man. Hope I look good coming in high def, man. Robot Rick Trade says, please tell C Gen Coin big big newcom. I'm assuming you mean big news come. Big news come. Okay. Uh let's see here. Uh boom 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 boom. Uh bat. Yes, I'll add that to the list. I've got room for one more. Uh Philip says, keep trading for a living. Uh at Cracking crypto, uh, don't rely on streaming to supplement it. I feel it conflicts with the motives of the trader. I noticed that's the problem with YouTube TA guys. Also, we are in an extremely small market in terms of YouTube as a whole. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely. Shit, creatine. I'll allow that, uh, Yagami, just because you, you, you're funny. Uh, yes, we are an extremely small market in terms of YouTube, but <clears throat> I guess the reason, one of the main reasons I do this is because the more the more people know about how to trade the markets, the more rational the markets tend to react. At least that's my that's my hope. I mean, I've been you know I've been at this for a year now, and uh, you know the markets are still as crazy as ever. So, but yeah, uh, I, I appreciate your input, man. Thank you, Philip. We got another linky in here. All right, yes, okay. Moving on the link, guys. So Ripple, bullish, Ethereum, bearish, neutral, Bitcoin, bullish long term on the higher time frames, bearish today today okie dokie so let's go over to chain link which i already have drawn out all right so this looks complicated it's only because it's not all right so i believe uh where were we yesterday so yesterday's stream uh would have been about uh 24 hours ago so, so we would have been right about here. And what I had drawn Seijin coin tell please, man. Listen, I'll get to Seijin, maybe I'll be looking at it, man. Uh, he's doing link guys. Oh, he's doing link guys. Uh, the price chain links directly correlated to search his weight. All right. So, let's uh let me do this otherwise I'm going to get distracted with chat. All right, so let's look at link, guys. So yesterday, let's look at the higher time frames again. 
So let's just be realistic about what we see, guys. I'm gonna approach the link chart just like I would approach anything else, okay? We had the, our major periods of accumulation right around down here, people buying the dip, all right? Which you can see confirmed by volume by time and volume by price. Then we had more, we had a lot of uh, active volume in this consolidation period right here, okay? It does not take a genius to see this. The majority of that is going to be right here, okay? We see that confirmed by volume by price and volume, or excuse me, volume by time and volume by price. Okay, then we move to the downside and we have our boom, boom, our two dumps and a pump, all right? And <clears throat> look where we're at right now, guys. We are getting into our overextended period where we're in, where we have nothing but uh, low volume nodes above us. When we see price get overextended, uh, we see there's only, there's not an infinite amount of buyers in the market and taking this into account of the current cryptocurrency market and sentiment, this to me looks like an area where I'm taking my profits. You know, if you were lucky enough to get in or smart money was able to get in on dips, especially, I mean, here's an area where you would have entered, where you see a breakout of previous resistance. Okay. You see price break into resistance and then you see a drop down and you see a dip. All right. Where you get a, where you get a buy signal from your Fisher transform, you get a dip in your RSI, but RSI does not confirm that. Actually, let's uh, throw on. There we go. So this is an area where you wanted to potentially enter into the market because you've had a bullish movement on good volume, a declining low volume movement. All right, so these are all areas where you wanna be looking to enter uh, after you get confirmation of a bullish break. And then again, you're looking to just buy dips and continue to ride the movement upward. However, at some point, these people have to take profits. At some point, these people have to take profits, and you can see that they're taking profits here, and they're taking profits here, they're taking profits here, and they're taking profits here. I think that this is an area where, where we're going to get significant profit taking. And as you can see, these tails, these long tails to the upside, these long tails to the upside are indicative of, this is, uh, just so you guys understand, uh, the very top of this tip, uh, that's somebody buying. Like, somebody's buying right there. You know what I'm saying? And that's not good for them. Uh, because this, that's, those are retail traders uh, convinced that price is going to continue to move up and they buy at the very top of an uptrend and to their horror price immediately moves against them. And you can see this because we're in a low volume node, guys. Price does not like to stay in low volume nodes. It likes to shoot through them. However, in the case of being at the, you have to, you have to correlate that with being at the top, at the absolute top of your trading range. Price likes to shoot up stop loss hunt people out and shoot back down accessing liquidity in these low volume node areas now is it possible that link continues to run absolutely anything is possible if you start breaking above this all-time high and really closing above it at 9802 okay well then you have to assume that you're going to be looking for resistance up above this area and again low volume node if you're getting bullish movement if you're getting confirmation with big bullish candlesticks on closes above your uh, above your local high here, then you can start looking for more upside potential because, and you can expect for price to rapidly increase more uh, until you start getting to your all time high here at uh, eleven nine sixty seven. And once you start posting new all time highs, then the bias is to assume that price will continue to post new all time highs. But let's look at this reasonably again. So you are above. Let's hide drawings for a second, guys, and just look at our EMAs. So on the daily chart, it's still bullish, okay? You're still above your 55-day moving average. Your stop loss is way down here, which would keep you in good profits if you had bought lower. But still, that is still like 30% below where you're currently at. Trying to find support on the daily at our 21 or at our 12-period moving average right here. You got your 21-period moving average right here. And again, I do have an alert for a potential link entry right here, but that's based off the channel formation. So let's look at the bullish channel that we've been creating. Okay. So measuring from our swing low to our swing high. So here's our 618 swing low to swing our local low to local high. All right. And here's our swing low to swing high movement. Okay. We're seeing confluence between the 618 and the 236 here around 8165. And I've plotted this parallel channel moving upwards. So generally we've seen that the 50% line does not res is not respected um, for breakups. Okay. Uh, the first, so we see we see rejection right here. We see a breakup. It is not it is not respected as support. So I was predict I was expecting, and I said this yesterday, the price would break through the fifty percent line, and we would look for a potential reentry around this area where we're testing the bottom of the channel and we're testing that six one eight resistance, guys. 
And again, you can have your stop. Again, I'd be moving into the lower time frames for my stop. So here we go. This is better to me. On the 12 hour time frame, still above your 55 day moving average. And again, you're finding support now on that 21 period moving average. Coming down, looking at your measured movement from the breakout of this triangle that I had plotted, again, almost all the way down to where I said the 618. Measured movement of the break to the upside would have been the top of the channel. We didn't see that, and we weren't expecting that because this 50% line does not hold the support. It gets broken every single time. It's broken here and it gets broken here. So that's two taps. That's a double tap. So waning volume, waning bearish volume, typically a good sign. We're still in a period of high volume nodes, so price is likely to bounce around in here. Okay. I'm gonna need to see. I'm going to need to see price move above this local high and close above it before I'm going to say that we've not reached the top. To me, as a trader, this to me looks like we've topped out. If I look at, I mean, and we also see a little bit of weak class B divergence here, guys, just a little bit. We do actually form a little bit of a higher high on the Fisher transform, but it's very weak. And if we look at the RSI, the RSI is also giving us right here. Now it's not completely bearish divergence, but it's damn near because we're forming a much extreme high on price action, yet RSI is barely able to make a higher RSI. And we see the exact same thing on our Fisher transform. So that is class B, that is fairly neutral bearish divergence. So we'll just see where price moves from here. Most likely scenario, we see a little bit of consolidation down in this range, or we see a reversal of movement back up. So you could be looking to take a speculative entry here on the 12 hour chart at that 618 at the bottom of the channel, and you could have your stop set below your 55 period moving average, which is where I would be taking profit, especially if you had been trading this all the way up. You want to have your stop set at the 55 day period moving average. If you're not doing as I like to do and selling on big green candles, that's where I like to sell, especially on high volume. And um, actually, this would have been a fantastic candle because you see you see a strong bullish movement right here on the preceding candle. And then the next candle is a very strong bullish engulfing candle on low volume. That's an excellent spot to sell because you see uh, you get the MACD waning on the very next candle. So that would have been an okay spot to sell as well. So again, guys, listen, you know, love our link, man, but you know, secure your profits, look for a break above this 50% line. You can re-enter, you can buy above the channel, keep your 55 day period moving average in time. In mind, looking at our six hour chart, we can see that our 55 period moving average, our entry is actually slightly below that. So we would be speculatively entering on a potential stop loss hunt on that trade. Again, here's the breakdown of that symmetrical triangle with that descending wedge. Fisher transform going into oversold territory, but the RSI does not confirm that. RSI says you're only at the 50% mark. So we've got quite a ways to go. Now let's tether that with the fact that the RSI has reversed in unoversold positions before. So here again, on this dip, we reverse here. So we do have RSI support right here. We have some fairly, fairly strong RSI support right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, six times price has reversed around this range of RSI. It means we've got a little bit lower to go, okay, which would correspond to my entry position right here. Potential entry position. It's not a buy order, it's just an alert on trading view. So when I'm going to start looking at price, it also corresponds to the top of the volume resistance right here, guys. You know, you got you to have confluence. I'm not seeing a waning in bullish moment or bearish momentum yet on, this, on the six hour chart for the MACD. Do we see it on the, no, we don't see it on the 12 hour chart. And we don't, and we see waning bullish momentum on the daily chart. Four hour chart. See a little bit of waning momentum on the four hour chart, but it's very weak, very weak. Hourly chart kind of looks the same, guys. So again, on these, I prefer to look at my longer time frames for what direction we're, we're going to post. So most likely I see us moving down. Go back to the 12 hour chart. I think that was the prettiest. I see us moving down into this range right here, guys. Okay, probably where we're gonna head. 
and either we're going to see some consolidation around that level, which would be likely after a high volatile movement, and then we either reject from that area, and below this 55-day moving average, I start to get pretty bearish, and we just start to look for places where we can catch a knife, or we start to see buyers step in and price moving up, guys. But just remember, if you're a trader, if you fundamentally believe in this coin, just remember that there's investors and traders with way more capital than you do that move the market way more than you do, and uh, they bought in here. Okay. They bought in around here, and they're probably looking to sell right around here. Makes sense to me. So, probably going to get trolled now. Moving up. Uh, Dipanshu Dahia, sorry about that. How are you handling the dip? What's your strategy? Well, I was on air a few days ago saying buy the dip. I added to my BTC position, and I'm cool if BTC goes lower because I will just continue to trade. Um, I'll continue to trade on BitMEX currently, and then I will be moving to once Deribit gets added to Trading View, we'll be migrating to Deribit so I can trade options uh, and futures contracts over there, and then we'll pretty much be done with BitMEX. Uh, and I'll just continue to multiply my BTC uh, even all the way down to 4,300, which again, I don't see I don't see signs of yet. Let's deal with 5,200 first. Malicious Upload asks, how do you feel about doing TA on other exchanges while trading on BitMEX as BitMEX is a derivatives platform and doesn't have any capability of price discovery? Well, that's why I like to look at the spot market uh, before I look at BitMEX. However, BitMEX sometimes moves before the spot market uh, however, some you know sometimes the spot market moves before the mark mark price. So uh, I, I like to look at sentiment. That's why I like to look at sentiment. So uh, it, sentiment for Bitcoin traders generally they tend to get it right. So I try to take a wide berth of my data. I mean, look at my sentiment data. I am correlating BTC USD shorts, Euro shorts, uh, Japanese yen shorts, and and GB, GBP shorts. Uh, same on my longs, and I look for all that data so I can more traders, more data, uh, better accurate movements. Look over here, uh, when I'm charting XRP price, I'm also charting XRP BTC price. Same with LTC USD and LTC BTC and Ethereum as well. So uh, more markets, better idea of price action movement, you know. Um, and then when I'm actually looking at entering into a trade, uh, yeah, that's your bottom dollar. I'm actually looking at the platform that I'm looking at. So if you, here's my BitMEX, here's my BitMEX uh, screen right here. Because this is, uh, this is what I do, a trader. So yeah, like I said, guys, look for those short entries on those overbought positions. Wrecked. Yeah, that would have been a fantastic, that would have been a fantastic short entry. RSI goes oversold, Fisher transform peaks and gives you the short signal on the very next candle. And MACD lags behind three candles. Uh, just one candle. One candle for the Fisher and two candles for the RSI. Not bad. All right, let's see here. Going back. Jeremy asks for Cardano. XRP not having any follow through currently. XRP Squirt says, thank you, Justin. Appreciate what you are doing. Uh, we'll add Cardano to the list. We're going to have to do these fairly quickly because I spent so much time on Link. So MFT will be next. That was requested first. But to be fair, Johnny Boy, being critical of crypto is fine because I'm just as critical of fiat. At least fiat has paper in use across the world right now. No denying blockchain is a tech, though. That doesn't mean that these coins are going to be worth a damn, though. True that, true that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, K7 Jixer 1000. Is that referring to the bike, man? Like a Jixer? Because you spelled it wrong. But I... I like Jixers. What's the name of the vertical volume indicator on the left-hand side of your screen? Uh, volume profile, variable range. Uh, you have to have a TradingView Pro account to access it, or you can just sign up for the trial. Uh, you just go into indicators and go to volume profile, and you'll be able to access either fixed range, session volume, or visible range. It's probably one of the best, uh, best indicators out there. XRP to overtake BTC in 30 days, says Sushi Nakamoto. We'll see here. What's that bottom indicator above RSI is the Fisher transform. Fisher transform converts price into a sine wave into your traditional bell curve. Uh, Fwed Adwood. Wish I knew how to pronounce your name, man. Uh, you're welcome, man. Happy to look at link for you guys. 
Keck Nation in the house. When Link hit 9990 on Binance, I saw a couple Ma Molly Mol Molyun sell walls pop up. Thanks for doing that. Cheers. Thanks, you got me. Uh, DJ, lots of bad activity back in February, May on Link. Yep, doesn't surprise me. Sergey will not let us down. Yeah, I agree, man. Thanks. I have been thinking about the BitMEX bots getting their signals from other exchanges, but could other exchange bots get their signals from BitMEX? Perhaps. Yeah, there is a lot of there. There's a lot of interplay, guys. And depending on how, uh, depending on how you do it, I think that most bots uh, are generally programmed to the exchange that they're trading on. That's uh, but that's getting pretty advanced. That's a good. Uh, that's good. Um, that's good. Uh, it's a good idea, you know, looking at spot price relative to market price. But again, the way that I correlate it is that spot price tends to, you know, okay, mark price does tend to move a little bit before spot price because you're going to have your speculators, people with larger capital, speculating on the movement before the actual movement. So typically you would want to be looking at your mark markets actually to predict movements in your spot prices. However, you know, you always want to do a good uh, sentiment analysis on your spot price. Uh, which is your commitment of traders to kind of figure out where the market is likely to move. Got to watch crypto. Good morning to you, man. I have a low cap shit coin, not on trading view. How can I get it on a chart to be able to read it with TA? Well, uh, depending on the exchange that you're on, they may have a basic trading view plugin feature and, uh, and you can use that. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use the, that's why I'm not on Deribit yet because they're not on trading view. And I, you know, uh, I am married to the way that I trade. So I'm not going to start doing something new. I'm not going to use an exchanges, uh, an exchanges, um, a plugin for trading view or whatever. It doesn't have what I want. doesn't have the settings that I want. I can't use my custom indicators. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's why like on BitMEX, I don't even have the chart open. I don't like the only thing, the only thing I use BitMEX for is execution. ICO News Channel Zcash, please, sir. Listen, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I wish I could, but I've already got five requests. I can't be on Steak Sauce. Thanks for joining us this morning. What's up? Uh, tune in tomorrow and uh, pop in here early, and I will take a look at Zcash. Too much on the plate. All right. Check in with BTC real quick, guys. Let's see what's going on. Not much. Still back into that sideways accumulation range. RSI at that 50%. So still looking for that break. We're above, right at our stop loss for a long, all right, according to trailing stop strategy. However, I'm still feeling pretty short about this because we're getting consistent fades from the 55 day moving average. Again, be proven wrong, but uh, pretty confident in a short position up till 50. In the short term, guys, the day trade. Long-term Bitcoin charts looking more bullish by the day. I've already went over. And then, uh, XBT USD. Kind of seeing the same thing, guys. This was a perfect opportunity for a short. We just keep getting faded out, guys. Keep getting faded out. And until the pattern breaks, trade the pattern. And yeah, they got wrecked. Oh, coin farm. Why do you play with my... We gonna love? We can do this the easy way or the hard way, Coin Farm. You know what? You're cool, man. Welcome back. You're good. Keep doing you, man. Stellar Lumens, I already have open. Oh, I said I'd look at MFT first. Sorry. Chain link, basic attention token. Ooh, guys. Oh, damn. Woo. Sorry. Hold on. Got to pause for the cost. We're in Mithril right now. D. Uh, John Dunn, how we doing this morning? John, I hope you bought some Mithril, man. Posting that in the signals now. And boom goes the dynamite. Strong close about that 55 day moving average. Oh, yes. Andre. Andre, these are dips. This is not a dip. <laughs> Sorry. Shots fired, bro. Hey, you're good, though. Like what you said last night. You got in, so we're good to go. That was, uh, so the target you see I got on my screen right here. 4019. So uh, maybe set a stop there. 
and see where this pullback comes in and then maybe get back in at the 618. Maybe take some profits right here and just, just follow our uh, 15 minute chart. Just uh, maybe uh, have your, have your st stop loss on the eight period moving average, honestly. Catch this movement as much as we can. And uh, yeah, then we'll just kind of wait and see what price action does. See if we continue to pop up from here. Maybe re enter at the 3904. Might retrace me. All right. Um, yeah. So actually, let me recommend that. We're in uh, basic attention token too. So, uh, there was my stop. All right, feeling pretty good about that now. Back into that high volume node area, and I think it's probably time to tighten up that stop, guys. But, uh, you know, I gotta keep it real. I gotta keep it real on the hourly chart. And uh, starting to look good, guys. Closing, see if we can close above that 55 day period moving average. Sorry, sorry, MFT, said MFT. So we will look at MFT. <sighs> Gotta keep these open. So let's just, uh, here's what I'll do. There we go. All right, so start with the daily. All right. Pretty fresh coin, so TA is gonna be a little difficult, but uh, for a long position, you're button up on the daily right here with your, uh, with your trailing stop, which is average true range. That should help you not get kicked out of the trade. Uh, falling bearish volume. Okay, that's generally kind of a good thing. Falling bearish volume at the bottom of a downtrend. Coming up on strong support. Okay, so I can feel this. I can see it. It's a good, good stab. Uh, this would be a place where I'd be looking to get in maybe if I'm trying to catch a counter trend trade. But on all coins right now, I'm real speculative about doing that. Again, but you got confluence here, guys. You got confluence. You're coming up on your point of control. All right. You got, you, you got some good, uh, good support down here. All the way down below. Right, right about here on the daily chart. That's probably where I'd have my stop if I were trying to enter into a position right now. But uh, you know, your RSI isn't oversold. I'm not seeing a buy signal from the Fisher yet, which it's gonna lag behind, so I get that, it's cool. Uh, but you can see how accurate uh, how, how accurate the, uh, the Fisher has been at catching the tops and the bottoms right here. Sorry guys. Got a frog stuck in my throat. Gross, I know, but it is what it is. Um, MACD hasn't shown any waning momentum yet, but that's okay. I can see it with a volume. Let's look at the 12-hour chart and see if this starts to look a little bit more positive. A little bit of sideways movement here at a consolidation period right at the top of the point of control, so that's good. That's good. You do get a potential entry right here on the Fisher where the RSI does become oversold. RSI becomes oversold again, and you're going to be getting a signal printed on the next candle bar here. Uh, still, I mean, as far as um, as far as trend trading, uh, you're still underneath your moving averages. Uh, but again, we also see waning momentum starting here, so the MACD would have given you a potential speculative entry here as well. Coming down to the swing trade time frame. Swing trade time frame, you've got some pretty strong resistance up here, so you're looking to break out. However, you have another pocket right here. Ooh, all right, what do we get? What do we got? Thank you so much for the sub, I missed it. Yeah, it's water. Uh, let's see here. Uh, whoever, uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, Midav, thanks for the YouTube subscription, man. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Um, 
let's see here. So Fisher transform on the six hour bottoms above the zero line, not generally fantastic. It means we're not entering into an uptrend yet. But again, we're talking about trying to counter trend trade. We're trying, we're talking about trying to catch the bottom here. All right, and your RSI goes oversold here. This whole period is oversold RSI. So this is RSI telling you it's an okay to enter. Although Fisher would have not had you enter until this candle and then this candle as well. So again, we're using RSI to confirm overbought oversold positions with our Fisher, which is actually graphing price like a wave and predicting the more likely turning points. <sighs> I don't know guys, I would probably be out of this uh, just because of the current alt market right now. I mean, there's great trades to take, but I'm less in trades right now uh, because price can just go lower and you can just get stop loss on it out. It doesn't look terrible. It, it actually looks like okay. But for me right now in the alt markets, like okay isn't good enough for me. It needs to be fucking perfect, man. Yeah, let's go to the hourly chart. All right. Say you're, let's say you're intraday trading this. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, I would just wait. I'd go down your lower time frames. Maybe your hourly, your four hour would probably give you better confirmation, but you're a ways away on your four hour chart, you know? Um, you know, hourly, if you really want to be speculative uh, and just wait for a close, like at least, like for the love of God, above your 55 day period moving average, you know, 55 day period moving average. Now, if you want to take a position size swing at this, again, like I said, it's not a horrible idea. Uh, let's see what your drawdown potential is. About 9%. About 9% if you buy right now. And what's your upside potential? Well, you've got some low volume nodes, but let's see where your resistance would be. Let's see if it's a, let's see if the risk reward ratio is in it. Okay, so there's your areas of resistance. If you can make it above those. So, pop out our handy dandy long position. So the risk to reward ratio on that is not worth it to me. The risk to reward ratio on this one would of course be worth it to me, but I don't see it yet. And if I were looking for that kind of risk to reward ratio, I would definitely want to be seeing bullish confirmation of a reversal in trend so that you can actually get into something that's going to make you money. Uh, HJB, thanks for the sub on YouTube, man. Appreciate it. I will move, listen, malicious upload. I will move that over to the upper right. I got you for sure, dude. Uh, I will definitely move that over. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I would definitely wait for a reversal in trend to be getting into this one, guys. Normally, I'm all about buying the bottom, buying on these, uh, uh, again, buying on big red, uh, big red candlesticks, but we don't see large volume down here that it's telling us that selling pressure is exhausted. This is just run-of-the-mill, sell-off, bearish candlesticks. Now, can price move up from here? Absolutely. But it's not a setup I look to take. I looked at, if I'm entering into a position like this, I wanna see capitulation. I wanna see a big ass, big old red candle right here on volume and a movement probably like down to here. You know what I mean? Then I'm like, oh yeah, it's time to buy that. There's no more sellers in that market. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, hopefully that was helpful, man. Uh, next one, uh, next three should be pretty quick. XLM, BAT, and ADA. So we'll look at XLM real quick because we just took profits on XLM. Twice. And XLM's looking pretty goddamn good. Let's look at the daily, man. God, XLM just fucking continues to perform for us, man. So guys, if you're still holding your XLM, man, whoo, move that stop up. Move that stop up, guys. You know how we do it. And let's fucking hit this bit. All right, again, we're, we're coming into that really extended period, guys. We've broken above major resistance, though, guys, and closed above it. That's what's pretty cool, dude. Let me close that because that was like short time frame. Okay, so again, didn't I have just some alerts go off on XLM? Um, Got to quit doxing my trades. Like anybody could just look at my alerts and be like, oh, shit, he's getting in that. No need for the premium. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys. So here's like our strong support now right here at 42.36 on the daily. Uh, and, you know, and we, we tested that, rejected from it, and then we were able to break above and close strong above it on three days, three consecutive days. So where's our next areas of resistance? 
Okay, well, got to get above this area right here, which makes sense. That's horizontal support and resistance right there as well. We're getting confirmation there. Then above that, man, it's just like cherry sky, beautiful, like bubbly land where it just like where the rivers flow of milk and honey. And there is there is abundant, uh, abundant bitcoons just flowing from the left and to the right. Naked ladies dancing in the streams. You know, it's uh, it's it's all low volume nodes up here, guys. Like XLM could really like like stupid run <sighs> the 12 hour chart, but it's also possible we just get bam slam dunked back down right here. But hey, you know, we've been in this for a minute. Yeah, last time we bought a little bit here. I bought a little bit more at 4084 right here and boom, boom. About 8% on this last play. All right, not bad. And that's how we do it, guys. Small, steady profits add up over time. So... 12-hour chart. I already did the. I mean, I already did the calculations on the daily chart, guys. I mean, that's the most important thing. You know, move your stop up to your uh, to your strong support right here, or underneath it actually, if you want, because you don't want to get wicked out. You know, you could set your stop up at this horizontal level of support right here. That's resistance. That's now going to become support. Also, kind of like right below your high volume node right there, where there's like a little bit of a gap, because then you probably won't get stopped till there. Uh, and then, yeah, man, just fucking do this, baby, dude. Or if you're like trend trading this up, man, just like set your stop at like your 55 day period moving average. But I probably want to go down to a lower time frame to be able to capture more profit. All right. So you just set your stop a little bit below your 55 day period average. And uh, yeah, it would be able to keep you in this trade. And then you're just looking for a pullback to reenter. Six hour chart looks pretty goddamn bullish as well. Looks like we're going to run today, guys. Maybe a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. This is pretty good to see. This is pretty good to see. A lot of volume pouring into Stellar Lumens right now. Why is that left price scale right there? I'll never know. For the love of fucking God. No, not for kids, by the way, guys. Yeah, and the RSI not moving into an overbought position. Not, not on the four hour, not on the six hour, not on the 12 hour, guys. We've got some room to run. Not even on the one hour. One hour says we've got some room to run. And here, here's that parallel channel, guys, on the hourly. And we're just right at the bottom of it. Kind of broke out a little bit. That's fine. Again, I'm, you know, I, I didn't, well, I didn't draw it right. It's a problem. Boom. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. That seems about right to me. Yeah, because you can see we get consolidated along the 50, the, the, uh, the 50 percent line there, get rejected from it, are able to gap through, consolidate briefly, break down through, and now we're just kind of trying to follow this channel up, guys. So if you want, go to your hourly chart, just follow along with your fast DMA, set your stop loss underneath your 55 day moving average. If you're wanting to day trade this baby, four hour chart, four hour chart guys, set it below the 55 day moving average, six hour chart. If you're multi day trading, blow your 55 day moving average, it's pretty simple guys. All right, BAT. Starting to feel a little bit better about my BAT call yesterday. I think what I said was BAT could continue to run. I'd have to go look at it. What did I say yesterday? The Discord. BAT in uh, premium signals. Okay, yesterday at 6.03, still looking for this breakout on BAT, consolidating at resistance. Watch BAT, guys, could continue to fly to 41.30. All right. So, now I feel a little bit more validated because we were consolidating along that 55-day period moving average. We broke down from it, got rejected from it, and now we've been able to close an hourly candle above that 55-day period moving average just as the Fisher is coming up to our non-over-bot over, uh, territory right at that zero line right there. So that is what I like to see, not seeing us come up to resistance in an overbought. That's generally where you're going to get rejected. So BAT could now fly, guys. So we're in that position nice and strong. Stop loss down here at 37.50. Probably go ahead and move that Maybe right on up to the bottom of the low volume node right now is what I'll do right live on air like that. Let me let the guys know.
Boom. All right, cool. And uh, yeah, we'll just be watching that one closely, guys. We got some room to run. We're entering into a low volume node area, guys. So we don't really see resistance up here until 39.57. And uh, going to a little bit of a higher time frame. A little bit of a higher time frame. Uh, we don't really see a lot of resistance till 43.25, which is like pretty cool. But uh, on the four hour time frame, got some resistance. Got some resistance above us, guys. Got, got, got room to break above. Got room to break above. Is your transform potentially giving us a buy as RSI rebounds from the 50% line area? Ooh, but uh, we'll MACD is trailing behind a little bit here on the four hour chart. So we'll see if we actually do get a change in trend. Swing high to swing low. Where do we come down to our 382? Generally, you want to see a 50% or a 618 retracement. So still uh, next period of resistance looking at our 55 period moving average here. So that would be around that 4,000 mark. So we'll just watch that closely on the hourly chart or on the four hour, excuse me. Oh yeah, let me go back to the four hour. So again, you want to zoom out to your next time frame to look for where your resistance is going to be. And I'm going to put an alert. Uh, price crossing. My slow EMA. done looks pretty good guys though looks pretty good volume coming in not a whole lot but we'll see if we get play off of it uh let's see moving on moving on moving on onwards and upwards bro you've been hanging with red planet 32 a little bit too much wow why do you say that a little bit goofy I was goofy before Red Planet 32, man. Guaranteed. All right. ETH taking off a bit right now for the funding rebate for the longs. An hour till funding. You know, that's right. You were talking about that, man. I know a couple guys that uh, that I've heard. I mean, you're, you, I've heard that idea before, like to a trade a trade sentiment based off that. Let's go look at the longs. If Coin Farm will load for there, we go. That's right. You know better. You know better. Go look at Ethereum USD longs. Yeah, you see the last minute, last five, last ten. Yeah, their uh, longs are piling in. Take advantage of that funding. Yep. Crypto going to 1800 on long-term charts. I assume by crypto you mean Bitcoin. And, uh, yeah, that's all uh, speculation, man. Because shit happens, man. We do things one day at a time, one Satoshi at a time. Check in with our beloved Bitcoin real quick. All right, guys, here we go. That run back up. Close out that short. Look for another opportunity to enter into a long. Wait for the RSI to become oversold or move up here. Let's wait for the Fisher to give us a sell signal and we can wait for MACD to confirm. Looking around this area right here, we're coming into, we're coming, looking to break above resistance right here. Five minute chart on BitMEX. A little bit above us right there. So we'll just watch this closely, guys. What we'll do. Just pick something you want to trade today. There's a lot of exciting things to trade today. You got Stellar Lumens, uh, BAT, uh, MI uh, Myth, uh, Ripple on. Uh, let's go look at Ripple on BitMEX. Is Ripple exciting to trade on BitMEX? I don't know. I didn't really look. Because the spot price is doing something doesn't mean the. Market mark mark price will be doing something fantastic. Sorry. Yeah. The last five minutes. I mean, look how volatile this bitch is. Oh yeah, forty percent trades all day long, baby. Uh, sh 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 this would have been getting an opportunity for a short right here. RSI gets oversold. Fisher gives you the crossover. Up of an uptrend, big bullish candle. That's where I like to sell. 
And so we'll just wait for another opportunity, guys. Just wait for another opportunity. Most likely on the five minute chart, looking to enter into a short term. But again, that's not trend trading strategy, guys. We're above that 55 day period moving average. You're gonna increase your, uh, you're gonna in increase your chances of success by assuming that price is gonna continue to go on a tear and wait until that confirms, all right? So this is more, again, high risk, high reward, counter trend trading strategies. But you see that those big pumps on high volume are good opportunities to enter a short, right? You know, you get canceled out, whatever, it's all good. But if you trade against the trend, times not so good. Maybe ripple today, maybe not such a good idea. So maybe actually a good place to stock up on a long. Depends on which way you want to take it. Depends on which way you want to take it. I'm generally looking to counter trend trade. But you might not want to bet against Ripple right now. I get wrecked. Update. 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 Yeah, I can see it in the long start to pick up, pick in. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Initial D asks, are we in the same situation as the crash at the end of 2017 or are we in a whole different situation? Well, we're definitely in a completely different situation as the crash at the end of 2017 because the crash at the end of 2017 was uh, at the top of a uh, absolutely insane, irrationally exuberant bull market. Malicious Upload says, I linked your stream in my Discord, so hopefully you gain a couple new subs. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Bitcoin has so much fraud going on, so all my Bitcoins for XRP. Uh, welcome to the uh, welcome to the uh, XRP uh, Shill Club. So you basically sold out your Litecoin for XRP. You guys are funny, dude. Uh, CV and how it. However, I do have to look at the last request first. And the last request was Cardano. And pretty much looks like every altcoin right now, guys. Like even our beloved Cardano, guys. Like it's like at the bottom, looks good, but it just doesn't look good enough to me because it can just go lower. Listen, you know what you're thinking. Here's I hear your brain. Your brain saying, "But Justin, look at the hammer candle." Okay, let's do a little bit of uh bar replay okay okay so this is two days ago but justin look at the hammer candle bump i mean come on guys price can go lower okay because you see a hammer candle even one on you know like fairly okay volume right there but again that's not that's not super significant to me it's not it's not an outlier okay uh yeah man like i just need to see like bullish confirmation and it's not so much to ask it's not so much to ask that these goddamn coins close above the 55 day period moving average for once since freaking may i mean is it so much to ask still bearish guys look at that 55 day period moving average broken in may resistance 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 Nothing. Just don't see it, guys. When it's when the charts are bullish, I'll be bullish. When the charts are bearish, I'll be bearish. All right, looking at the 12 hour chart again, you know, is there a possibility for you to reverse here? Yeah, but I mean, you're at the bottom of the uh, of the HVN here, guys. There's a pretty yawning gap below you. Pretty scary yawning gap, too. Six hour chart. Are you swing trading? And the RSI got a little oversold right here, and the Fisher gave you a buy. Uh, price just moved lower though, and now RSI isn't oversold. So that is a little bit of bullish divergence on the six hour chart. All right. You guys, see that? A little bit of bullish divergence on the six hour chart. Okay. I'll give you that. Bullish divergence on the Fisher as well. Okay. on the six hour chart. But again, it's just not good enough for me, really. Four hour chart, 
be a little bit more pronounced. All right, CNVR0, thanks for the sub on YouTube, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, it just doesn't look good, man. Like, ugh, God, I want to see some nice, like, bullish candlesticks pouring. And again, like, but we saw that here, dude. Like, we saw, like, let's bar replay here on the four-hour chart. Okay. Okay, look. Like, this is what it would have looked like at that point in time, right? Look, you get this nice, strong, beautiful reversal hammer candle on strong bullish volume. Like, fuck yeah, Cardano, we're going to the moon. Bum, da -dum. Like, just didn't happen, man. Didn't come in. So, yeah, not looking good. I mean, even on your lower time frames, you're not in, you're not, you don't see a trend reversal yet. I mean, you could have at least traded this right here. You could have bought on the breakout of the 55 day moving average and sold, I guess, probably when you're 20, 21 day. So you don't want to sell on the, like, okay. So this is a buy signal, okay. And you're respecting your trend trading. You're, you're probably looking to sell and then you're looking to re-enter on every retouch of your, of your uh, fastest moving, uh, moving average. Uh, and then once price touches your, uh, or either closes below really is the way to do it, closes below either your uh, medium fast or your medium, then you're looking to exit the position. So that would have kept you, if you just bought on the initial signal uh, and you got a uh, you got a buy signal from the Fisher Transform and uh, MACD crossed over right here as well. Uh, let's see, if you go back to the beginning, like RSI gave you a buy signal here, Fisher Transform gave you one two bars later. And you also get on that same bar a change in momentum and then bullish momentum start to pick in here, continues to rise. Good selling to buy in at this point. But yeah, then you get the crossover the 55 day moving average. So you definitely would have been in this trade uh, here and you probably would, I would have been out like right around here. So that's like a good 6% trade. It's cool, man. But yeah, um, not right now, not today, not today. We'll check back tomorrow. Maybe it looks better tomorrow, you know? I doubt it. All right, sir, let me look at your charts and then I'm gonna get off of here. It's been a long day. Oh, three of them, three of them. 33 Rue, by the way, you guessed the link drop. Can you do that again today? A link drop. Fast Money Crypto, good video. I am a fan, the Oracle. Good to see you, man. Crypto Kibo. Nope. Not uh, not feeling that Mibcoin thing, man. Saw that shit with Electronium and one of my good friends got fleeced. You can take that Mibcoin and push off with it. Uh, money make... Money make... Money... Mackle... Money make... Yo. What's up, dude? Uh... <laughs> Um, what do I think about BAT? Uh, rewind the video, man. I did BAT. I did BAT. Rinaldo Ramirez, have you seen Genesis Vision? Uh, I have not seen it. I have. I know what you're talking about. Do you think the VPVSV developing POC is a good bias instrument short term? Yes. Yes, I do. It is pretty fantastic. Like, let's. I'll give you a. Hold on. Sorry. I'll do that. Let me look at this dude's charts. Ether, I did it in depth, Gregor. Uh, please rewind the video. Willie Grow, how are we doing this morning? Good to see you in the stream. Uh, let's look at... Um... Oh, this guy's charts. Could you take a chain uh, look at Chainlink? Rewind the video, brother. I did a long, long, long review on Chainlink. Uh, let me go back to uh, C, uh, CVNR0. There we go. Here's your first chart. Just a meme. All right. So let's see what we're looking at here. Uh, oh, you got Elliott Wave stuff going on. Okay. I see what you're saying. Hmm. So one, two, three, four, five. And then... When you switch to the ABC at some point, I know that. I guess we'll find out, man. 
That's interesting. Correlating gold with Bitcoin. I mean, there's some good validity to this. Some good validity to this. What is this? 2011, and we have the crash down to 2015. And what happened with gold since then? Looks pretty good to me. Pretty good to me. Recovered quite nicely off that bottom. So yeah, is it possible, man? I don't know. Uh, you know, I've drawn the, uh, one of the things that I did was if we go over and look at, God, you're killing me, dude. Uh, let's see here. Go look at, um, I don't want to mess up any charts. I'll just do it on ADA. Okay. So here we'll go look at BTC USD on Bitstamp and the uh, log chart. Let's unauto that bitch and hide, hide, hide. Boom. Okay. Oh, and the weekly chart. Auto. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Yeah, that one got broke. What's the one that everybody's been drawing? Here we go. I think it's this one, right? Yeah, here we go. Boom. Okay, looks about right. So, again, only after 2013, Bitcoin never traded underneath this logarithmic trend line. And that is right down there. Oh, damn, that's right what you said, dude. Cool, fantastic, awesome, I like it. Depends on where we fall, though, because it could be like, meow, 2,800, it could be like, 1,200, it could be like, 1,800, I don't know, dude. Uh, not something that I'm really seeing. And again, is it possible? That's cool. But I'm already on air saying that I'm stacking Bitcoin all the way down. Again, I'm going to take it one day at a time, one Satoshi at a time, because I think that any, any, okay, I guess here's my point. Okay, that looks good. Even what I drew looks good. What I see you got over here, where'd it go? Here we go. Oh, you know what? They can't see. Shoot. Sorry about that. They can't see. Let me uh let me um let me add it. Uh oh, yeah, this is the easier way to do it. I just copy this and go into here and then Come on, man. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to do it this way. Here we go. <clears throat> so, okay, this is the chart that CA, uh, CVNRO uh, was talking about. And so he's correlating the price of the Elliott wave movement of, uh, of gold. But I don't like, I'm, you know, again, because like, what about this stuff? Like, I see you don't have it all waved out. But again, I'm not being, I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just being critical of you. Uh, and again, like one, two, three, four, five. But again, we'd have to look at previous data and see it waved out. Like that, you know, like Elliott wave theory to me tends to work in hindsight, hindsight. And I don't know anybody that makes a lot of money off Elliott wave theory. So we were bounced down to the low of two in your estimation. All right, and then we see price recover after that. So I guess the takeaway from this is that price will recover if we go down to 1711, which is cool. Let's go take a look at what I have uh, looking at volume. So let's take a look at the weekly chart on Coinbase. And I have my supports. Uh, so we have our daily low at, uh, at 5200. And we're looking at where we're going to close the week right now because we because we will be establishing a new swing low close for the weekly chart. We are at the 786 Fibonacci retracement, measuring from the swing low to the swing high on the weekly chart. If we stay above the 786, I think the price will consolidate around this region and continue to move up. If we go below the 786, more than likely we look at lower levels of support. 4386 being our first level of support, not super strong. Uh, however, there is volume there. Uh, next level of support, 2931. Again, more volume there as well. That first level of support corresponds with the descending channel that we've been trading in for a while. 
And that second, uh, that second level of support is probably going to correspond to our 618 on that channel or our 50% retracement line confirmed by volume and horizontal support and resistance. So, interesting, possibly, but you have to wait and see, man. Because how many times could you have drawn this on an asset and it went and it, and it played out differently? So we'll see, man. Cool idea, though, man. I like it. I dig it, dude. Let's see. You posted a few other charts. Look at those super quick. I'll look at one of them, and then I'm going to do the uh, BPSV, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce. Juggling a lot. Oh, life, life easy. Money make life easy. I got you, dude. For real. You could open up a trading fund and people decide to invest on performance all thanks to the GVT token. They'll add 4x soon. Sounds great, dude. Let's do a challenge, 1,000. Uh, thanks, sorry, I missed it then. Hey, no problem, man. Start, make 1% a day for two years. Possibly, yeah. Will market go up again so we could recover huge losses because of getting in the market when it was bullish? I mean, I don't know, guys. You know, that's trader speak. I trade. Market could go either way, man. Uh, I take it one day at a time, one Satoshi at a time. Bitcoin looks a little bit more bullish as we move along. However, we have to be looking at our downside potential. But if you want to take your investing advice from me, hashtag not financial advice, I mean, I will be buying Bitcoin all the way down to a dollar. I've staked my claim. I've spent, I've invested too much of my career in Bitcoin. Uh, and again, I'm not, it's not a, a bullheaded mentality that I'm not willing to walk away, but I believe in the fundamental aspects of Bitcoin. So I'm willing to invest in it. Now, will I let that take me, will I let that take me into an unprofitable situation? Like, no, like if, if my Bitcoin investments start to not be profitable, uh, but for right now they are, and I can, I can see them being profitable all the way down to 3000 because of uh, now Deribit and being able to trade features and options. So I can continue to just stack up my Bitcoin in a highly, you know, in a, in a very volatile market. Love it, beautiful. If that doesn't work, heck, I'll go trade options in traditional Forex. Forex is kind of dead to me right now, but I'll go trade options and uh, and continue to invest in Bitcoin because it's pretty fucking awesome. When everyone starts buying it, we'll go up, but now it seems people are waiting to buy in. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, we're seeing a little bit right now, but we'll just kind of wait and see where this weekly chart, uh, this weekly candle closes for the monthly. Monthly candle also kind of looking ugly. I mean, we're still closing below our lows. You know, we've got a new monthly swing low. So, just have to wait and see, guys. Where's our, uh, let's hide our drawing tools. Monthly chart. Our 55 period. Oh, we don't even have a 55 monthly period moving average. Oh, this is on Coinbase. I'd have to look on Coinstamp, sorry. But uh, looking at the weekly. Weekly still getting resistance right now from our fast to CMA and our, our slow fast. So again, we tried to break above the 55 day period moving average, which was pretty, pretty nice. And then we have the Bcash, uh, you know, well, no, this isn't the Bcash split war. This is the Bcash bullshit split war right here, but. Other FUD, boom. So we'll see what happens guys. One day at a time, one Satoshi at a time. Don't get over your skis. Make money trade. ETH 147 USD, BTC under 5K, 4,800. Fast money crypto. I sold at 16K, bought two Lamborghinis when they arrived. BTC 6,100 USD. Killing it, dude. All right. Uh, so I will give... Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I Hey, man, I'd like to see more of your charts. Um... Uh, CVNR zero, but um, I want to I want to do this uh, VP uh, VPSV for my man's, and then I gotta go. So let's bring up a decent chart. Yeah, let's look at uh, Bitcoin dollar, and I'll pull up. Let's do the week. Let's do the daily and linear and auto. Okay, so we'll go to indicators, and we'll look at volume profile and session volume. Relating. I'll 
volume profile, we're going to input extend point of control to the right. Okay. Now this all looks crazy, but uh, this is one of the most useful tools of VPSV, session volume. So what session volume does is it breaks on a daily chart, it breaks every trading day, which is 24 hours one day, into a volume, into a volume profile. So you can actually see the volume profile for each day. So we've got to zoom in here pretty tight on the daily chart, as you can see. Uh, but you can see your session volume. And it also lets you know the point of control for that session volume. So when you start breaking in, make that a little bit. Go to Tix Pro. One. Okay. What is it? 20? I'm going to get that in 240. There we go. That's a little bit better. And value Eric's POC right. Okay. We'll do that for right now. So you can actually see the volume profile for the candle that you're talking about. And uh, what's really nice is that you're able to see in your daily session, like, okay, so when we're getting back up into this range, like, where is, where's the volume at? Like, where can I look to see where the volume is at? Now, can I, uh, something real quick to make this easier to see. Uh, okay. Figured that would work better. Didn't. Why did that not work? Better? Oh, I know why. There we go. Cool. All right. So make that a little translucent. So yeah, you could actually trade just based off that. So you know that in your daily chart, well, where's your point of control? Okay. Well, your point of control is right here on this session volume, and you've got good resistance right here. Here's your point of control where traders are interested in selling at or buying. So this is where you're looking for resistance. You use this as strong support and resistance, you know, and you can like map those out. Let's say we draw some lines. And then we go to a lower time frame, and we should see that price is ranging fairly nicely right in between that strong support and resistance. Okay. Another way that you can use it is actually go in and see. see here's your session volume, right, for one day. And you can see. Where is price likely to face resistance from? Got rejected, but then once we close above it, it tends to act as strong support. Same thing over here. Once we actually close below uh, our point of control, and we see our other high volume node right here, which acts as resistance. These are all, these are all, I mean, this is a really fantastic tool to use. And you can also see that there's no freaking volume down here. So you're looking at areas where price is not likely to hang out very long. Where if you see price go into these areas, you can generally be safe and going the direction that uh, that low volume is. And now this also will tell you that if you look here, there's no goddamn volume right here. So if we are able to get back up to this area, price will likely move upwards fairly quickly, which is a good thing. And then you can also extend point of control to the right. So let's go back to, let's go like to the 12 hour chart. And because I'm extending point of control to the right, basically you're looking at points of control with current price action that have not been breached yet. So like, for example, this price at this this uh, point of control like corresponds all the way back to this candlestick right here and then it got taken out right here so it's not really relevant data you're looking at the most freshest volume data because these are the most active and, and recent market participants so again you're looking at resistance up here because these are the points of controls on those 12 out on those daily periods same thing uh, right here you're looking at your your daily support and resistance and you're looking for areas that are going to get kicked out by price so once price starts trading below for that to become your resistance if we close above support etc etc uh, you can also go in and add your developing point of control and your developing value area so you can see that okay well in this time period how was the point of control uh how was the point of control established where did it move from from time to time because then i can use that to figure out how price will likely develop in the future and you can also use the developing value area to figure out, well, as how were traders interested in moving down? How, how did this get settled out as a reliable trading range? So this is all like really, really useful data, man. The volume profile is like probably definitely one of the most powerful tools in my tool belt. Oh, Going over to the chat. MW3 SAMP official. 
Well, BTC went from a few hundred dollars to 20K, so most likely it will bottom out around 1,600 to 1,800. Like the 2014 bear run, it will fall this time too. Highly likely. Still 1,800 would be 500% return for three years. Yep, that would be fantastic returns. If we compare the previous bear market 2013 to 2014 of BTC, it mirrors the current bear run. Sounds good, man. Like I'm willing to accept it, guys. Like again, the charts like, okay. Daily chart looks good. Weekly and monthly time frames look like shit, dude. Just like I was talking about the um, just like I was talking about the altcoins, man. We don't have any on the daily chart. We don't have any confirmation of any trend reversal. And until we get confirmation of a trend reversal, I mean the charts remain bearish. Now going down, looking for a bounce or a short play, which is what I do. I mean, look, we can see that momentum continues to fall off. Momentum continues to fall off, and we've had a good, nice, high volatile dip. We should generally see a nice little bounce back up on our daily chart to at least our eight period moving average. That would be nice to see. But until we see uh, after a period of high volatility, very often we're going to see a period of low volatility. So we're still range bound, still looking at taking longs and shorts to the upside and downside, looking at establishing our trading range. And this is what I'll be doing, guys. I will be over here. See, I told you guys, shouldn't bet against XRP. I'll be over here. On the bitmex chart and right now i'm probably looking to go short uh on the intraday time frame i'm probably looking to establish probably looking to establish a potential long bounce up to 5600 is what i'd like to see so all right guys i have done enough damage for one day Thank you everybody for coming by and supporting the show. If you guys want to keep us on the air, if you support what we do, if you want to take your trading to the next level, then head on over to crackingcryptocurrency.com. Click this beautiful blue button to join the community. We'd love to see you on our Discord. Share your charts, post your memes, talk about cats. I don't care. Love to see you in there. If you want to support me and keep the lights on, make sure to check out some of our merch, guys. We got it all. T-shirts, caps, ball caps, all that fantastic, fun, beautiful stuff. Scott worked hard on it, and you guys don't want Scott to eat ramen noodles. If you guys are interested in taking your trading to the next level and you want to follow along with our mentorship program and follow our trade signals, you can check out what we have to offer in Trading Signals. And as always, if you want to contact us, you can drop a line to contact at crackingcryptocurrency.com or fill out our beautiful form, guys. Make sure to check out your crypto daily news on crypto or on the YouTubes. Uh, you know, we're worldwide. Scott post the uh the um links yep there he goes there there he goes with the links we're all over the place guys twitter youtube mixer periscope blah 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 yeah fan fantastic but the best place to find us is in our discord as always guys feel free to dm me if you have any questions ah uh, check out crypto coins for bounties airdrops and giveaways go check out mmo coin x42 uh let's see here and um i feel like if i have anything else to plug like uh oh check out my interview tonight with calum from project zero z uh tonight at 8 p.m central standard time 9 p.m eastern seaport time guys looking forward to that interview that should be fantastic guys that's all for me for today guys you know what time it is cue that outro